I would like to introduce Alan Jeremy from Netflix Enterprises. Yo, what's up everybody? This is Alan Jeremy and welcome to this second programming tutorial for beginners. So in this tutorial we'll be covering programming jargon and this basically just means the terms that are used in programming so that you can have a better understanding of how things work. Okay, so first of all, before I start the tutorial, I would like to apologize for the delay in making a new tutorial. And this is because some of my friends have been complaining that I haven't been texting them or replying to their messages. And basically, my social life has been dead. But that's because I've been really busy with a lot of stuff. And I couldn't make a tutorial because even when I wasn't busy, I was with some people and, you know, the video will just get messy if I tried recording at that time. So anyway, I've been quite busy and uh, having some girl issues here and there. And basically my social life is dead, but what do you know? You just have to sacrifice some things in order to get some other things. For example, in this case, I'm learning a lot of things myself and I guess I just have to sacrifice part of my social life so that I can maximize out of my learning experience. And I'm not saying that you should uh, like lose your social life or anything, but I guess that's just a sacrifice that I had to make. So anyway, enough of, about me and let's get started. So, computer programming jargon. What does this mean? These are the terms that are used by programmers and basically used in the computer programming field or industry or whatever it's called. Anyway, the first one is statements. A statement is basically a complete thought. That's how you can think of it. For example, when you want to tell the computer, print hello world, that's a statement. When you want to tell the computer, uh, Something like add one plus one, that's a statement. That's a complete thought. So statements are complete thoughts. Keep that in mind. Source code is the next one and source code is basically the code that you write. So whatever code you write is actually the source code, whatever you write into your editor or IDE, which is an integrated development environment. Next up is object code. The object code is the code, the source code that has been compiled and converted into machine language. So the object code is basically what the machine can understand from your source code. When you write your source code, it is compiled and once it's compiled, it's converted into machine language because machines cannot understand your source code directly. So the source code has to be translated into a machine language so that the machine can understand what you're saying and do what it needs to do. So no need to make a fuss about that and you don't need to uh, master exactly what I'm saying. But if you have an exam well, or an assignment or something, then you can just uh, say that the object code is the compiled source code that has been converted into machine language so that the computer can understand it. Okay, next up is variable. Variable is basically something that allows you to store values. For example, if you want to store the, in a game, if you want to store the health of a player, you will not use the numbers directly. For example, if you want to have the player have a, health value of maybe a hundred at the beginning and then you have to subtract uh, maybe some value like let's say 10 every time the player is attacked well you can't use the actual value 100 because you will have to subtract 100 then like 100 minus 10 that will be 90 then in the next part of the program you'll have to subtract 10 again from the 90 and you need to write 90 10 you have to keep track of the values yourself so a variable with a variable you can do this you can have a variable that stores the value 100 as health 
or rather health is the name of the variable. So now when you subtract 10 from the variable health, which has a value of 100, then the value of the variable health is going to be 90. And now you can just, you don't have to keep track of the values because that's going to be done by the computer and your health will reduce as you expect. Uh, I think I'm getting ahead of myself, so I'll explain this uh, in detail once we start doing actual coding and it will make more sense then. Okay, next up is a variant. A variant is a variable that has no definite type, or rather a variable whose type has not yet been declared. And again, once we start coding, uh, it will make more sense. So basically, if you have a test or an exam or an assignment or something like that, just remember that a variant is a value. I'm sorry. A variant is a variable that has no defined type. Or rather, a variant is a variable whose type is not yet defined. An example will be... Well, I don't think I'll give an example right now because it will just get confusing. So I'll also explain this in detail once we start doing some actual coding. Uh, next up is operators. Operators are basically special symbols that can be used to perform certain functions within your program. For example, we all know the arithmetic symbol. We have the asterisk, uh, which can be used for multiplication uh, in, I guess, all languages that I know of. Um, we have the plus sign or the addition sign. And this can be used for adding values and it they also have other functions but I don't want to confuse you but just so you know operators are basically special symbols that can be used to perform certain functions within your program for example the backslash can also be used for division and the minus sign can be used for subtracting simple huh Okay, next up is functions and methods. Actually, functions or methods. I guess they're the same thing. So functions are basically just called methods in some languages and they are pretty much the same thing. So what are these functions? Functions are a group of statements that have been, what's the best way to explain this? Functions are a group of statements that have been grouped together. Wait, what? I just repeated myself. Anyway, functions are a group of statements that have been put together in order to perform frequently performed tasks. For example, if you had a game, for example, and you wanted a player to attack an enemy or something. So maybe a player has different tactics. You could create a, an attack function whereby you just have to call the function attack in order to attack an enemy and this function will contain all the statements required for the attack and you can pass in parameters and I will not go into detail about parameters right now but you can pass in parameters to make the function uh, usable and flexible for many purposes again I will explain this in detail once we start doing some actual coding. And this video is basically just to allow you to wrap your head around the statements. Uh, no, I think I messed that up, but anyway, I'm not going to repeat this video. Uh, well, what did I want to say? Hmm. This video is just to let you know the terms used in programming and so that when we start programming you won't be so lost about the terminologies that I use or you won't be so lost when you're talking to programmers and they use some certain terms so that you can just understand what they're saying basically and uh, pretty much make you look smarter when you use the terms 
but just make sure you don't mess up with the words anyway i think i'm getting off topic next up is translators translators are can be subdivided into three and these are assemblers interpreters and compilers okay so assemblers are used to convert machine la oops i messed up again assemblers are used to convert assembly language into machine language so source code that is in assembly language can be converted to object code uh, by using assemblers interpreters translate the source code into object code but it reads the source code and translates it line by line and lastly compilers compilers translate the entire source code at the same time into object code and when we are working we'll mostly be using compilers okay so next up algorithm algorithm is pretty much the most commonly used phrase by programmers i guess and beginners and an algorithm is basically just a finite uh if i'm pronouncing that right which means a known number of steps that are going to be taken in order to solve a particular problem i think i made that sound more complicated than it is but an algorithm is basically the logic of your problem so i think i'm um, a bit confusing but it's a finite number of steps that are taken in order to solve a particular problem for example um if you wanted to print one plus one and then if one plus one is equals to two then tell me the number is even okay a pseudocode is written logic that can be read by humans so pseudocodes are basically just uh, written logic it's human readable logic that has been written down that can be used to guide a programmer when designing a program and you'll see the usefulness of this when you start creating huge systems so next up uh, the flowchart is just a graphical representation of your program's logic so while a flowchart is a graphical representation of your program's logic a pseudocode is basically just the written form of a flowchart i hope that's not too confusing and for those who have done computer studies this should be quite familiar but i will explain more about that when we continue no i meant when we start coding so basically that's the end of this tutorial and sorry for the uh, confusion it's been a while since i did tutorials so i guess i'm a little bit rusty and well thanks for watching please comment like and subscribe and this is alan jeremy from deflex enterprises Oh yeah, I changed the name to Deflex Enterprises from Incorporated. Not like you care, but anyway, comment, like, and subscribe, and thank you for watching. Have a good day.